Hello, and welcome to the Interface Engine how-to videos. My name is Pedro Jimenez, and I will be your instructor in this series. This set of videos will cover the NextGen Connect, formerly Mirth Connect, Integration Engine. But first, ease your burden of integration deadlines through the HCI Solution Interface Engine Management, Monitoring, and Consulting Services. Regain your freedom to focus on innovation by browsing to the HCISolution.com or emailing info at the HCISolution.com. And now, without further ado, let's get started. In this lesson, we will gain a basic understanding of the structure of channels in the NextGen Integration Engine. Next, we're going to construct an HL7 version 2 pass-through channel. And finally, we're going to test a channel. But before we begin, we need to set some expectations. First, we assume that you have worked with hospital interfaces in the past. Second, have a basic understanding of an interface engine. And third, have some basic programming experience. However, we have some great news. Even if you do not have the experience outlined previously, this is a great opportunity to at least get a high-level overview of how interface engines work. But first, we need to answer the question, what is a channel? A channel is an interface in NextGen Connect. It can be HL7 version 2 over TCP IP, fast healthcare interoperability resources, DICOM, thought transfer, or HL7 version 3. For example, here's a channel that receives HL7 admissions, discharge, and transfer messages, which we will abbreviate as ADT, from the electronic medical record application. The source connector then makes a copy of each message and forwards it to each of the three destination connectors, which then send a copy to the lab, radiology, and cath lab applications, respectively. If we drill down deeper, we notice that each channel connector is made of three basic subcomponents. First, a connection, which receives or sends the message. Then, a transformer, which changes the message. And finally, a filter, which contains rules that dictate if and where a message gets forwarded to another channel, destination connector, or application. The filter and transformer components are optional, so for now, we will focus on building a pass-through channel. A pass-through channel is an interface where the data being transferred is unfiltered, that is, where all messages are transferred without qualifying them. But most importantly, that the data does not go through a transformer, that is, the data is neither parsed nor changed by any other channel components. And now, we're ready to build our first pass-through channel. The first thing we need to do to build a channel is to log into the NextGen Connect Administrator. We do this by going to the task tray icon, right click and select Launch Administrator. We enter our credentials and hit the login button. Next, we click on channels to make sure that we're in the channels display and we click on new channel below under the channel tasks. In the summary tab, we go ahead and enter the name of the channel. And that channel will be Epic ADT, assuming that the EMR will be Epic. Next, we start working on the source by selecting the source tab. Since this will be a standard HL7.2 interface, we're going to select TCP listener. Next, we select the appropriate local listening port. In this case, we'll choose 9,661. At this time, we're pretty satisfied with our settings, so we'll work on our first destination. To do so, we click on the Destinations tab. Since our first destination will be a TCP receiver, we'll go in and select the connector type as a TCP sender. And before we forget, Let's go ahead and name our destination, which in this case, it will be named Epic ADT to Nuance. Next, we set the destination sender to always queue messages. 
Notice that we have minimal lower layer protocol selected in a transmission mode. This is exactly what we need because we will be sending HL7 2x messages in this example. For the remote address, I leave it the same because I'll be sending these messages locally. And the remote port will making 16,660. And by the way, let's go ahead and test that connection. I already have my own HL7 2x receiver ready, so I'll just click test. And there you go. Now, given the fact that in a real world scenario, you will not have a destination ready to receive the messages that you send from NextGen Connect, here's what will likely happen when you click on the text connection button. In this case, there is no receiver ready to receive messages from NextGen Connect, so the response from NextGen is that it could not connect to a destination. And this is perfectly normal. However, when you begin testing, or this becomes live, you will definitely want to see a successful connection to a destination. But since we're building, let's just continue. Now, here's another interesting setting. Keep connection open. This keeps the TCP IP connection open to its destination. Just because I'm used to it, and it's probably a good idea just to keep an eye on the connection itself, I'll just select it as yes. I'm pretty happy with my changes, so I'll go ahead and save the channel. To do that, you go into Channel Tasks and click Save Changes. Next, we go into the Channel section, and there's our channel. And now we're ready to do some testing. Once our channel is deployed, we are automatically switched to the channel dashboard. As you can see, there's a channel with the name Epic ADT, the source, and the first destination. In reality, it is possible to have multiple destinations feeding from one source. In this case, Epic ADT could be copied to not just one, but to many destinations. As a first step in my testing, I'm going to go ahead and activate the HL7 listener in the background. This listener will be receiving the messages sent from the next gen connect destination Epic ADT to Nuance. Please take note that even though the listener is active, next gen connect ADT to Nuance destination does not show connected yet. The destination will only attempt to connect once it has messages to send. Next, I'm going to activate my HL7 message source in the background. Once I do that, you will notice HL7 messages will be sent to the HL7 message source. I'll go ahead and reveal my background ADT message producer and consumer applications. On the left side is my ADT message producer application, and on the right, my ADT message consumer application. Let's take a look at what's happening message flow wise. In the dashboard tasks, I'm going to go ahead and hit the refresh button to get a latest update of what's going on with the engine. If you go to the receive column, we're showing that we have received 2003 messages, now 2007. No messages are filtered since we have not applied any filters. No messages are queued and the same amount of messages has been sent. Finally, you'll see that both the source and destination interfaces are connected. One thing to note is that because this is a pass-through interface, there are absolutely no qualifications or changes being made to the messages. Therefore, we should expect that the received and sent message counts are exactly the same. Let's take a look at the source logs. If you would like to see the messages received, click on the source row, and this will open up the message logs for us. If you click on each row, we can examine the received message. If you wish to see the messages delivered by the destination connector, return to the dashboard and click on the Epic ADT to Nuance destination connector. In this window, you can modify a message and in addition, reintroduce a message by clicking on the process message button. Now let's take a look at the lower bottom of the dashboard. First, you will see the server log. 
The server log contains any next-gen integration engine related messages. Next, the connection log will contain log entries related to the connectivity statuses for all the senders and destinations in the engine. And finally, the Global Maps tab displays all the globally accessible variables within the engine. But don't worry, as we will discuss these in a future lecture. And now, let's go ahead and add two more destination connectors. So first, we go to Channels, double-click on the channel, go to Destinations, and we click to add another destination connector. Let's go ahead and add a third destination. So we click on eDestination, select TCP sender, yes, we want to keep the connection open, and keep it open indefinitely. Now we save changes, we deploy the channel, and if we look at our dashboard, you will see the two new destinations added. Now we have an ADT interface with one source connector and three destination connectors where the same ADT will be duplicated to. And if you wish to see the deliver messages for a given destination connector, just click on it and it will open the message logs. And there you go. And now that you're ready to construct some pastor interfaces, I would like to refer to you two highly useful reference sources. First, the NextGen Connect Fusions Manual, which you can download as described in my first video. And second, the NextGen Online Community. This is the perfect place for support, general discussion, and channel development topics. These are great forums for those who want to make or get suggestions on working approaches to MIRTH channel development questions. And for our final thoughts, I would like to again thank the HCS Solution makers of SyncSolve and providers of integration engine services for making these video series possible. Please navigate to the document library for a detailed brochure which describes interface engine service offerings and the solutions matrix that tailors to your healthcare facilities integration challenges. This is Pedro Jimenez and thank you for watching.